Hi there everybody out in the, the vinyl community, it's uh, Mark again. I haven't done a video for quite a while so I thought I'd uh, show you what I've got in the way of uh, some new Zappa. As you know I'm a, I'm a big uh, Zappa freak. Uh, I've been collecting lots of his records over the last uh, year or so. Um, I got some, some new ones, uh, a couple bootlegs that are really kind of cool as well. Uh, before I show those though, I'd like to uh, first off thank um, Super Wes for um, sending me the book, uh, The Vinyl Junkies. Um, he drew my name um, uh, for submitting uh, a response video to his sexy thread, sexy album thread, ways back, and uh, this is what I won. It's a great book. I, I've only just scratched the surface. I'm really kind of saving it for um, a camping trip my wife and I are going on in a couple weeks, and uh, that'll be my main source of reading. So once again, uh, Wes, thank you very much. Okay, just a few uh, pickups. Oh, but first off, um, what's playing in the background? It's really cool. Like, um, it's uh, Jethro Tull, their first album called This Was. Um, just reading about it on the internet, a lot of the uh, diehard Jethro Tull fans don't really care for this album because it's not as progressive as what they later became to be. But it's a great rhythm and blues album, and you can tell, you know, where their roots come from. It's definitely from rhythm and blues, and uh, Ian Anderson's flute just adds a different dimension to it all together. I, I think it's really, really cool. I've played this now a few times, and uh, it's uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite records, so very cool album. Just the other day, I picked up um, ZZ Top's second album uh, at a record store, used uh, Rio Grande Mud. Again, another great... Uh, Rockin' Rhythm Blues album. Um, a lot of ZZ Top's earlier stuff seems to be like overlooked, like, you know, it seems like uh, all you hear on the radio was songs from Eliminator or Afterburners, you know, their later 80s stuff, more of a disco -y beat kind of a thing. But this is, their, this is their roots right here. It's just a great album all the way around. So I was really glad to get that. Um, not too much needs to be said about this band, Creedence Clearwater Revival. They're just, uh, they were just a great band, and like every album that they put out was like a greatest hits album, because every song that they, that they sang, it was, it was just great stuff all the way around. Like uh, this album, it's the Green River album. Um, I played this one so far, and like I said, I like every single song on there. It's just, uh, just a great album. I also picked up their first album, self-titled, Green's Clearwater Revival, with the long version of Suzy Q. Again, another great album, like Creedence, uh, just a great band and um, you know very mainstream obviously but at the same time a very listenable enjoyable album all the way through so very happy to get those I've got a couple other Credence albums as well that I've had for a while but uh, these two are gonna be nice additions to my collection which I'm kind of starting now in Credence <clears throat> I'm a real sucker for box sets as well that's so when I saw this I had to get it I probably paid too much for it bought it used but it's in mint shape the uh, Eric Clapton Crossroads uh, six LP set, and it's got works from when he was with the Yardbirds, uh, with John Mayall, um, Cream, Blind Faith, Laney and Bonnie and Friends, Derek and the Dominoes, and of course uh, highlights from all his solo work as well. So a great uh, six album set, which came with this um, really cool booklet as well, you know, black and white booklet, kind of like a biography of uh, Eric Clapton's work. Great stuff. Okay, I'm going to get into the Zappa stuff now. Um, this one I just got yesterday, or actually two days ago. And it's an Italian press. It's a 10-inch record. There's 10 songs in there, 10 short songs. Frank Zappa, How Is Your Bird? It's uh, The title's kind of humorous right there. But it, it is a, 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 a Zappa's very, very early stuff, before the Mothers of Invention even. So we're talking about like the early, mid-60s sort of thing. And uh, I haven't really listened to it yet. I'm going to give it a spin uh, probably later on today. What's cool about this too is uh, the vinyl. Is, like I said, it's 10 inch. And it's on this cool orange vinyl. So I was really kind of thrilled to get, uh, to get this record. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is uh, Zappa Bootleg Album. Um, 
may be, may be aware that Zappa actually did a compilation of his of the bootleg records called uh, Beat the Boots, where he actually took all the original album covers from the bootlegs and put them into a, you know, produced his own records. He, I guess he touched them up um, uh, in the studio kind of thing to make them sound a little bit better and uh, did a box set. Uh, well, this one isn't one of his Beat the Boots albums. It's an original bootleg. Uh, and it's Frank Zappa and the Mothers, Kiss the Season to Be Jelly. I tell you, that's one of my favorite album covers of all time right there. It's just so funny. Um, and uh, this record here was actually recorded in Sweden in 1967. The sound quality is not the best. There are some high points on the album, though. The, the first side um, isn't really that great. A lot of um, uh, 50s, early 60s covers, like the Bristol Stomp. Um, Blue suede shoes, hound dog, that sort of thing. Second side has uh, King Kong from his uh, Uncle Meat album and um, a song, or It Can't Happen Here, which is really a collage of all different kinds of noises. But it's really kind of cool to listen to. Um, interesting story about that, about this too, is I'm kind of reading on it. Uh, they're saying that, um, that Frank Zappa was actually very ill during the recording of this as well, and he actually wasn't even on stage for some of the songs, like the, uh, the covers of the early 50s stuff, because of severe stomach problems that he was having uh, that day. Um, anyway, but still very cool. It's a must-have for anybody who's uh, collecting bootleg Zappa. Great record. Next, I'd like to show you uh, another uh, Frank Zappa album, or uh, that's uh, considered to be a bootleg album. It's called the uh, Frank Zappa, The Torture Stops For You. And this one is uh, a three record set of um, uh, works that were recorded in 1978, uh, approximately a year before his Sheik Your Booty album came out. And um, all this stuff on here is pretty much a copy of, of what on Shika Booty, only different versions, of course. Um, so the bootleggers actually beat the album by about a year. Uh, although this isn't a pressing from 1978, this is a new press. I believe the uh, the original bootleg had a different cover and a different title to it, but basically the same recording. And uh, the quality on this is actually very good uh, for a bootleg album. Um, and it showcases Frank Zappa the way you would hear him if, uh, performing live. A lot of his uh, albums, even Shaker Booty, for example, were recorded live. Just the basic tracks were, though, and then tons of overdubs were put on top of that to make it sound more like a studio recording. So you actually kind of hear the band as uh, they actually were meant to be heard uh, playing live. Um, what's cool about this album, too, is it says on the back, uh, there's only 400 copies in colored vinyl, 100 copies in black vinyl, so it's kind of a collector's item. Uh, this one is a colored vinyl edition. Like I said, there's, there's three records. Um, they all have the same picture on the label. Let's see that or not. Picture of Frank Zappa there. Same picture on all six labels. That's on this cool red vinyl. Got this cop. Got this album sealed. Uh, bought it on Discogs a couple weeks ago, or got it, received it a couple weeks ago, and uh, I played it a couple times now. It's just uh, a great record. Um, next, Frank Zappa meets the Mothers of Prevention. Now I've had this one for a while. This one's been in my collection probably for about uh, four or five months now. It's the American um, version of the album. Um, and Frank Zappa on this album is uh, the main purpose of this album, I guess, is, is, is in his fight against uh, um, warning stickers on records and stuff like that. Um, uh, I can't think of the names. Tipper Gore, <laughs> Tipper Gore, who was who was um, um, the one who was really behind putting warning labels on records. So Frank had his own. Uh, private crusade against that and you know he, he voices his story through the music on this record he's voicing his opinion against it in a song called Porn Wars and uh, they also did a version of this record in uh, a European version which is this one here which I just received it doesn't have Porn Wars on it for the reason that 
Frank believed that uh, the Europeans really wouldn't understand what it was all about because the, uh, the Tipper Gore situation was more of an American thing than anything else. So he replaced Porn Wars with three other songs that aren't on this record. So, you know, the only way you can get those three songs is to have this record here. So I really haven't given it a listen to yet, um, but I'm looking forward to doing that uh, possibly later on today. Um, a mini album, or four track maxi single I got uh, the other day, is Frank Zappa, True Glove. This album, uh, the picture on here, was is uh, kind of taken from the, I believe it's the Us or, Us or Them album. Um, there's four songs in it. They're all humorous songs. Uh, in France, Be In My Video, He's So Gay, and Wonton On. Um, very cool stuff to listen to. His sense of humor is just, uh, it's just, you know, just amazing in, uh, in all four of these tunes. Um, great record. And my newest acquisition is Frank Zappa's Strictly Commercial. And it's somebody's opinion of Frank Zappa's greatest hits or the best of Frank Zappa. Uh, hardcore Zappa fan probably wouldn't say that this, these are his greatest hits. Um, my opinion is that they're all good songs, but they're songs that are, you know, for a novice Zappa fan, would be the easiest to digest on the first listen to. It's Frank Zappa's music, Log's music is very complex and it takes several lessons before you actually can appreciate uh, what's going on in the music. So, good album, some great tunes on here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it as great as hits. Anyway, essential to my collection, so I, I had to get this. Um, one of those cool album covers too, that, you know, that could be the front, or this could be the front of the album. Even the spine's done that way too, with with uh, the title here one way and then the title here upside down kind of a thing. And even the inside too, the one side is right side up, the other side's upside down. That's a very cool picture of Zappa, kind of a famous picture of him with the uh, portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Great stuff. Anyway, that's it for uh, my Zappa update. I'm probably going to have to do, at some point in the future, um, uh, another video of my Zappa collection because it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think I'm almost 50 albums now and I still got a couple more on the way. So uh, um, I'm becoming like a Zappa completist, but at the same time I'm not. Uh, a real Zappa completist would want every version of every album from every country kind of a thing. And you're looking at probably about 300 albums if you're, if you're doing that. I just want one copy of, of uh, every pressing he's done. I don't, I don't want every country that the album was pressed in. So I am kind of working my way towards that. Um, still a lot of bootleg stuff out there. Um, I'm probably still looking at at least another 20 albums anyway, if I can, if I can find them. Um, just call it a sickness, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video and um, take care. We'll talk to you guys later.